Hello, my name is Adara, and in this video series, I'm going to do an introduction to Retool for 2024. So for those of you who are here for the first time, Retool is a powerful developer platform for building completely custom software. And it's used by startups, it's used by Fortune 500 companies, by educational institutions all around the world to build completely custom internal tools or business software. So we're here on the Retool homepage, and if you scroll down, uh, you can see that the product has evolved and grown so much over the past few years that I think it's long overdue for an updated introduction video in 2024. So just to show you the breadth and depth of the Retool platform here, we can see that we can build completely custom web applications, uh, but we can now build backend automated workflows. These are like cron jobs that are running, giving you notifications. We can also build mobile applications. These get deployed over the air and run natively on your iOS and Android devices. And you can also do external customer facing apps and portals as well. So there's a lot of exciting content to cover here. And for today's tutorial, we're gonna go into building a really simple web app. It'll be your first retool app. And this app is going to read and write from a database. This is the main uh, retool instance homepage. This is my instance. And here you can see all of your applications. Um, but before going into building an app, I usually like to walk you through the kinds of resources or databases, APIs that you can bring into retool. So if we click create new resource, we can see here that we can bring in any retool or any REST API, Google Sheets, Postgres, SQL databases. And if you scroll down, you can also connect this with Snowflake, with Asana, with Slack. So today you can build pretty much any custom UI on top of any database data source in retool. That said, let's go ahead and create our first retool app. So this takes us to the main application builder view, and this is going to be a blank canvas with your main panels on the left hand side here, and then your detail panel on the right hand side. So I'm going to exit out of the tutorial so we can walk through uh, building our app, and then I personally like to put my code editor on the bottom, but you can configure this uh, however you would like. So before that, we're gonna look at all our components. So here we have our components panel. These are our draggable, droppable, pre-built components. Think of things like tables, text input fields, charts, graphs. If for some reason, however, we don't have a component that you need, you can always build a custom component and uh, use it just like you would in a React application. So let's say we're creating an admin panel to edit our user's data. Let's say we want to give our customer support team the ability to edit a user's email, for example. Uh, we can do that by dragging and dropping a table. Let's say we want to add a search bar uh, to the top here. And then on the right hand side, we want a detailed view for us to edit our customer data. I like to do that by um, building a container. And then I want to add a text input field here. And let's also add a button. Perfect. So just like that, I now have my UI. And actually, let's make some changes here uh, to use this as a search um, field. I'm going to remove my label. And then I want to add a um, suffix icon. And here we're going to use a search bar or a search icon. Apologies. I want to add a prefix icon. Oops, let's remove this. <laughs> prefix, sir, let's do this slowly. Prefix icon, search, there we go. All right, so now this looks like a search bar and uh, let's just make that really clear. Perfect, so just like that, I have a very simple interface, um, but what if I want to uh, now have my user's data actually show up in this table? So this takes us to the code editor, and this is where we can write queries to read and write from all of our data sources. So we're gonna create our first query, and here we're gonna connect it to retool database. And we can see here um, that this shows me all the tables in my database, and I'm gonna wanna reference my sample users table. So let's just go ahead and grab it, save and run. I can see that the query is 
running here. And let's just rename this to get users. Perfect. Now I want to connect this to my uh, table. And on the right hand side here, we can see a detailed view of all the properties of the components that we can modify and work with. So instead of demo data here, I'm going to say get users. And now I can see my users table. Perfect. Now I want to build out the search functionality to help me find the users. Uh, this comes out of the box now with our table component. So on the right hand side here, if we scroll down on the table, we see a search property set to fuzzy match and the search term, we want this to come from our search component, which is the text input one field. So to do this, we're going to write uh, some JavaScript and in retool, we can use these double curly braces all throughout our application to write JavaScript, connect components together and reference queries. So for this, I'm going to just say, give me text input one dot value and then oops, dot value. And then this is going to be the search term. So again, let's say I'm trying to find this stampy person and now I can find them there. Uh, let's try and find Loesch. Love these names, very creative. All right, perfect. So it looks like my search bar is working just like that. Now let's say on the right-hand side, I want my detailed view to reflect the selected row on my table. Again, we're gonna use the double curly braces here and I'm just gonna say table one, selected row, and I want this to be the name of, oops, I want this to, oops, to be the name of the person. Um, I can grab their name here. I can use markdown to make this a little bit bigger. And then let's say this is a place where we want to edit their email. And then the default value here, again, table one, selected row, email. And let's just put that as a default value in placeholder as well. Finally, for the button, uh, let's rename this to update email. And just like that, I have a very simple app now that lets me read data from my users table, lets me search for users, great. But now I want to write back to that and change the email. To do that, I'm gonna write another query here. And again, this is gonna be a retool database query. And instead of SQL mode, I'm gonna want this to be in GUI mode. I'm gonna to wanna to modify the sample users table by email, which I can reference via my selected row. And then in the chain set, I'll want to edit the email and again, pass back here, whatever I've put in text input to. Perfect. Finally, uh, I will want to fire off two event handlers. First is I'll want to refresh the get users query so that it just shows the latest user up here. And then just to show you that you can run multiple parallel queries, let's fire off some confetti. Now we're gonna save this query too. I'll call this update users. And, oh, apologies, did I do this right? Uh, update users, action type, update an existing record, perfect. So we'll save that. And then now we're gonna connect this update users query to my button. And this button has an event handler. We can do things here like fire off queries, run scripts, go to URLs, etc. So now we're just gonna fire off the query update users. All right, now I'm gonna go back into my uh, end user mode. And let's say that our uh, customer Loesch uh, didn't have the right email here. We actually wanna update it to Loesch at stanford.edu and we're gonna click update email. And this is gonna update Loesch and their email address here. So just like that, we've built a very simple retool app that searches for users, finds their information, lets us update their email. As you can imagine, you can modify this to update other things like what permissions they have access to and so on and so forth, whether they're enabled or disabled. So hope this was a good introductory video on how to update users in a database. Stay tuned for the remaining videos in the series. That'll show you how to do things like read and write from an API endpoint, join tables together, set off retool workflows, and use AI. See you soon.